Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Oh, uh, this is going to be on King James falsely accused. I um, posted a video by the Song of the Bride, where somebody had pointed out, and I noticed it myself, that uh, she did a video on who authorized you to call Jesus Yeshua. Well, she makes the accusation that King James was a wolf in sheep's clothing, basically, and also says that the traditional Hebrew Masoretic text is unreliable. And as far as the Masoretic text, I have to trust the believing scholars of the King James Bible that they knew which manuscripts to use. I mean, these are people that knew Hebrew and Greek and taught at universities like Cambridge and Oxford. Do you know those uh, universities are like 500 and something years old? I mean, what they teach today and what they taught back then is totally, totally different. But, you know, there were believers back then. Now, as far as the New Testament's concerned, you basically have three manuscripts to go by. You have uh, what they call Sinaiticus, and... Uh, the first three letters is S-I-N, Sin, Atticus. And it was found by a guy named, uh, oh, I'm going to have to look his name up. Uh, that's what happens when you get old. You know, the mind's the first thing to go, right? Uh, okay, yeah, I found the guy's name. He was, uh, the guy's name was S-I-M-O-N-I-D-E-S. -E Simonides, I guess. Um, he was considered one of the greatest forgers in history. And what he would do is take an old parchment or whatever and then copy it. Uh, well, not copy it, but, you know, write stuff on it. And then claim it was an old relic and then try to sell it to royalty or museums or whatever and make a lot of money and he uh, he got in trouble for some of this stuff but he was able to uh, avoid a lot of trouble I guess you could say but uh, he claimed on his deathbed that he was the forger of Sinaiticus S-I-N-A-I-T-I-C-U-S and uh, this is the basis for all the modern Bibles. Not the King James, but all the modern Bibles. And of course, they'll tell you, well, you know, it's the oldest and most reliable and blah, blah, blah. It was actually found in a monastery. Yeah. Uh, by uh, Tischendorf or whatever his name is. Um, you know... When one of the greatest forgers that ever lived in history claims on his deathbed that he he uh, forged this document, you got to ask yourself, why would he say that? You know, why? I mean, he's not going to get any money for it. Perhaps the, uh, I don't know. Why would he do it? I don't know. I cannot figure that one out. Uh, unless, of course, he had a change of heart and uh, knew where he was going without Christ and wanted to do, try to, I guess you could say, make things right. Maybe his conscience bothered him. I don't know. That's one of them. And uh, the next manuscript, which is where all the other modern Bibles use, and the um, Douay Reims, which was the Catholic version of the Bible, was the uh, 
what they called Vaticanus. Uh, V-A-T-I-C. Now, <laughs> if you look at the first three letters of Sinaiticus, you're talking S-I-N, sin. But if you look at the last four letters for Vaticanus, you're talking A-N-U-S, anus. Yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes I think the Lord has a sense of humor and does this so that you look at it and you go, hey, wait a minute, this, this other manuscript's got sin, and then this other manuscript is Vatican's, you know, A-N-U-S. But this is the basis of all the new modern Bible versions. The NASB, the ESV, the NIV, and all the other alphabet vampires that, uh, yeah, horrid, absolutely horrible. But um, I don't know. I don't read Greek. I don't read Hebrew. So, you know, when people tell me that the uh, traditional Hebrew Masoretic text is no good, I don't know. I, you know, unless they were Hebrew scholars uh, and examined all the manuscripts, I don't think they know what they're talking about. Just because somebody says something doesn't make it true. But the, um, the Greek Orthodox Church has 5,000 partial manuscripts. And this is what they call the, um, the received text, T-E-X-T. -E well, they, they call it the received text because it was received as divinely inspired. There are like 5,000 plus partial manuscripts that match what the King James Bible used for their translations from Greek into English. And people will say, well, you know, the King James has been changed and, you know, it's not the same as it was, you know. Well, it's, they can say it was revised. But basically what they did was they standardized the spelling and updated some of the language. Like, for example, what is a kine? K-I-N-E. Kine is a, like an Old English or Middle English word for cattle. If I told you that uh, I wanted to get milk from my kine, you'd be like, huh, what? But if I said I want to get some milk from my cattle, oh, okay, yeah. So, you know, they updated everything. But I'm going to have to trust that the Lord put his spirit upon the translators to know what manuscripts to use, and not the Vatican's, and not Sinaiticus, or Vaticanus, Vatican Zanus, you know, and uh, the traditional Hebrew Masoretic text. Uh, for example, oh, I wish I could remember the guy's name. There, when I was in Tennessee, there was a guy out of Carolinas, one of the Carolinas, I don't remember, north or south. Dr. Joseph Chambers, yeah, there we go. He, uh, he called a woman, a female, I guess you could say, who uh, worked on the NIV translation. Her name was Virginia Mollencott. And um, she was an avowed lesbian. And uh, she claims that one of the other ones was a, a male who was an avowed, you know what, I don't even want to say the word, uh, but... Uh, uh, you know, S-O-D, uh, might, yeah. Yeah, so uh, there was two of them on the translation. Well, I guess you, you could call it translation, whatever. But the uh, NIV, the 1984 edition, you'd have been hard-pressed to prove that men with men 
was a sin. Whereas the King James makes it abundantly clear. So, but this lady, he, uh, this Dr. Joseph Chambers, uh, he's all right in some ways. He had a radio show that I used to listen to. And the thing is, when you'd call in like I did, um, he would have a five second delay. And uh, one time I was pointing out that the pre-trib rapture verses that prove it's wrong. And he uh, cut it short and said, oh, thank you for your comment click. You know, so it makes it look like I was done speaking, but I wasn't. He just cut it cut it short. So you got to realize, you got to think either God blinds these people's eyes or they all work for the devil. I don't know which. But this guy, he interviewed this lesbian woman, female, and she was, he didn't interrupt her. He didn't tell her anything. He just said, look, I want to talk to you about your, uh, your role in the NIV. And um, she's like, oh, yeah. And she wrote a book on lesbianism. I forget the name of it, but you can look it up. I'm sure they sell it. Um, and she's like, oh, yeah, it's always been a part of me from a very young age. And I was on the NIV. And then uh, so she, he let her talk for, you know, 10, 15 minutes, letting everybody know what the... Uh, the people behind the NIV were. And then when this started becoming popular, well-known, uh, the NIV people said, no, 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 no. She never worked for us. Never, never, never. She's lying. Well, she got a lawyer and said, well, <laughs> that's funny. I never worked with you on the NIV, but I got a contract here that says I did, that you signed, and I got paycheck stubs that, sh that from you guys showing that I got paid, and she threatened to sue them for slander and libel. And then they backtracked and said, well, yeah, she did work for us, but she didn't have much to do with it, you know. Yeah. You know, sort of like uh, Bud Light and their little uh, advertising fiasco recently. Yeah. So did the believing scholars of the King James and the Geneva Bibles know what manuscripts to use and translate it faithfully? I have to believe so. I mean, was the Lord unable to uh, <laughs> figure out what his word should say in the English language? I don't think so. You know, when uh, there's been revivals with the King James and the Geneva Bible. Um, I forget if it was the Pilgrims or the Puritans or maybe both. But when they first came to America, they carried the Geneva. But King James wasn't real pleased with it because of the notes. And people read footnotes, you know. And I always tell people, you know, you don't need footnotes. You don't need the opinions of other people. Uh, James chapter 1 says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. You want to know what the Bible says? Read it. Ask in prayer to understand. You will. Um, you can get the Bible on MP3 or whatever. Listen to it on every day in your car or at home, on the computer. I mean, you'll learn a lot. In a very very short period of time depending upon how much you uh, listen so the thing is the Greek Orthodox Church has 5,000 some odd manuscripts whereas Sinaiticus I think is only one and yet they'll take this one manuscript that somebody claimed to be a forgery of uh, and use that to correct the King James. Yeah. So, the thing is, too, do you trust the Vatican to give you the Bible, you know, for the Vaticanus manuscripts? Uh, you know, the people that burned someone that dared to have a Bible, 
They burned them at the stake. They killed them for daring to have a Bible. This is the Vatican. Why anybody would go to the Vatican to trust uh, <laughs> them with the word of God, I, I have no idea. Now, in the days of Paul, the church at Rome was probably pretty decent. But that was a long, long time ago. It's not what it is today. Something else you should know. I mean, seriously, the uh, Inquisition in Spain. Um, there was a guy named Torquenada. Guess what tribe his family was from? Yeah, he was a J. Absolutely. At least that's what the uh, Jewish Encyclopedia told me. And uh, he was head of the Spanish Inquisition and tortured and murdered people for various things. Uh, one of them was having a Bible. Yeah. Well, the... Uh, so, the King James Bible is on the Vatican's list of uh, do not read books. Did you know the Vatican has a list of do not read books? <laughs> Can you imagine that? This so-called church has a list of do not read books and the Bible is on it. Yeah, don't read the King James Bible. It's the wrong version. Matter of fact, don't read the Bible at all because you want to know something about anything at all pertaining to God. Well, go talk to the priest and he'll tell you. And hopefully he's not uh, one that likes to play around with altar boys when nobody's looking. You know. Now, you'll hear things that King James was a mason well did king james say that he's a mason or do the masons say that he's a mason i hear the same thing about george washington just because somebody says the just because the masonic lodge claims somebody's a mason doesn't make it so i mean i've been falsely accused of many things too so does that make it so i don't think so and then people will point out, well, the original 1611 had Masonic symbols on it, on the cover. You know, the images. But I got a question. Did King James authorize those symbols? Or the pictures that were supposedly Masonic symbols or pictures? I don't think so, but I don't think so. Uh, did the publisher, the printer of the Bibles, were they Masonic? Were they Masons? Did they put these things on the cover with King James not knowing what they were? I mean, that's entirely possible, but I don't know. I wasn't there. A little before my time. But maybe neither one of those possibilities is true. Maybe the images on the King James Bible when it was originally printed maybe those images were copied by the Masonic Lodge well after the King James was printed in 1611 or whatever, 1613, whatever year it was. You know, maybe they copied the images and claimed them as their own and then try to use that information as to discredit the King James. Did they adopt it? I don't know. You know, that's very, very possible. You'll also hear accusations that King James was a Catholic. Well, guess what? You should read his writings where he calls the Pope an Antichrist. <laughs> uh, he doesn't sound like a very good Catholic to me, if you ask, you know, my opinion. Um... But King James wrote a lot of, uh, he wrote a lot. And his writings are preserved to this day. And matter of fact, I'm going to post a link down below in the description where you can go read his original writings. And uh, 
you know, I've heard, oh, he's King James was an occultist. He wrote a book on the occult. Uh, yeah, he did write a book on the occult. Not how to practice it. No, he wrote a book, uh, a, a pamphlet exposing it and telling us what to do with those that were into witchcraft. And it wasn't uh, tolerance, by the way. No. Nope. So, was King James a Mason? I doubt it. Was he a uh, into the occult? I don't think so. And then you're going to hear another one. Oh, he was a, uh, let's just say he liked uh, men over women in the bedroom. Well, King James was married and he had children, at least one. I'm not sure how many without looking it up. His son was named Charles. Uh, and by the way, uh, Charles was executed by Oliver Cromwell. And guess what Cromwell did? Cromwell allowed the you-know-whos back into England and they created, uh, years later, they created the Bank of England, which is uh, the equivalent of our Federal Reserve Bank, which is not federal, by the way. And the Bank of England is not owned by the English. No, they just control the money. Um, and if I mentioned who did this, uh, I might be in violation of the newly passed Florida state bill law that, uh, let's just say it's anti-you-know-what. Uh, yeah. So they can say they own it, but I can't repeat what they say. Because either Tube will delete my comments or my videos or my channel, or I can be prosecuted for telling the truth. And like I've said many times, anybody wants all my Bible studies and research, send me an SD card if you're overseas or, well, preferably an SD card, even in the United States. Um, I mailed a USB drive to Canada and it was almost $20 and USB drive in a padded envelope almost $20 what in the world is going on 20 bucks almost I think it was like 18 and change I mean really so an SD card I can stick it in an envelope or a, uh, a greeting card and mail it for, I don't know, whatever it is now, 60-something cents, whatever it is. So, is King James, did he like playing with altar boys like some of the Catholic priests do? Well, let's find out. The answer to that can be found in Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 13. Now, let me ask you a question. Would somebody that likes to play with men that plays with men in the bedroom... Would they allow this Bible verse to be in there? And my answer is no. But Leviticus 20, verse 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman. So if a man lays in bed with a man as he would do so with a woman. Both of them have committed an abomination. What is an abomination? Oh, that's real simple. An abomination is a sin that God really hates. I mean, it's extra strength hate. Uh, that's what an abomination is. Uh, so, men lying with men is an abomination. So is witchcraft. What is the solution? Well, let's continue reading. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. In other words, whoever puts them to death is not guilty of murder or killing. Their blood shall be upon them. 
Wow. Does that sound like something a king that liked playing with men would allow in his Bible? No, he'd have an NIV Bible. And oh, by the way, um, there is actually a queen, Q-U-E-E-N, no, not the music group, a Queen James Bible where they remove all those horrible homophobic references like this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And um, not one church in San Francisco that is gay friendly uses the King James Bible. They do use the Queen James. They do use the NIV. So, yeah. So, what does that tell you? So, was King James uh, one of those things? I don't think so. So, when people tell you the King James is, you know, wrong. Uh, now, I've never compared the three quarters of a million words. That's 750,000 words in the King James with the Geneva Bible. Now, I did have a photocopy of the a Geneva, and I compared a few things, but from what I understand, they are basically said the same thing. But you got to realize, I didn't go and read 750,000 words in the King James and compare it with the 750,000 some odd words in the Geneva. So, but from what I understand, they use the same manuscripts and... I consider them reliable. So, you know, what can I tell you? But I understand the publishers are changing the modern Bibles, the King James. It might say King James, but it doesn't uh, match. Now, there is a group called Bible Protectors. I think it's .com or whatever. But uh, if you look up the pure Cambridge edition of the King James Bible, you can actually uh, get a copy online, download it to computer, and if you were really smart, go, go to a print shop and have it printed and bound uh, in a book by, by yourself. You know, wouldn't cost that much. Uh, not only that, you could have it in the print size you like. Um, these old eyes can't read the small print anymore, so I always get large print or giant print. And, uh, you know, do that. But there's coming a day when we will not be able to speak freely on the Internet. I mean, it's the time is almost here. I mean, Florida passing that uh, law... Um, well, let's take a look at it. All right. Well, this is a uh, House Bill 741, which passed, by the way. Our l wonderful governor, DeSant DeSantinist, I mean DeSantis, uh, flew to the Israeli nation and uh, signed the bill. How, how can you sign a bill outside of your own country? But um, here's this anti-Semitism hate crime statute, well, bill, alleging myths about a world J-wish conspiracy or that J's control the media. Well, they can say it, but you can't. The economy, government, or other institutions. Accusing Jewish people as a whole of being responsible for real or imaginary wrongdoing by a single J-wish person, group, or the state of Israel, Israeli, or for the acts of non non Jays, accusing the J wish people of inventing or exaggerating the Holocaust, accusing J wish citizens of countries other than uh, the Israelis of being more loyal to the Israelis than to their own nations. In other words, dual citizenship, right? Uh, demonizing or applying a double standard to or delegitimizing the uh, 
Israeli nation. So, yeah, it's uh, really, it's pretty interesting when you think about it. So, I wonder, um, if I mentioned what the Bible says about who killed Jesus, and no, it wasn't Rome, and it wasn't Pilate, I wonder if I can get in trouble for that. After all, that's spreading lies, right? Hmm, I don't know. And of course, certain, uh, almost all your churches teach that the Antichrists are the chosen of God. Well, chosen for what exactly? Um, salvation? I don't think so. And if you don't know what an Antichrist is, well, let me read it to you in the King James Bible, 1 John chapter 2, verse 22. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. If you deny that Jesus is the Christ, you're a liar, plain and simple. Let's continue reading. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Now, if you don't know what group... Uh, denies that Jesus is the Christ, well, all you got to do is ask yourself, pretty much anybody that doesn't acknowledge themselves as Christians is Antichrist. You notice that Mormons, they call themselves Mormons. Oh, well, you know, so they're not really Christians. The Jehovah's Witnesses, well, we're witnesses of Jehovah. No, you're not. Because if you were Christians, you'd call yourselves Christians. Uh, Muslims. And then there's uh, another religious group uh, that I can't mention by name, you know, that we just talked about, that house bill. Yeah. Uh, they deny that Jesus is the Christ because if they acknowledge Jesus was the Christ, that would make them Christians, wouldn't it? And there is no such thing as a messianic. No, either you're a Christian or you're not. I mean, they're looking for their Messiah. So they could be, they call themselves Messianic. Now, when you start saying Jesus, I, I'll, maybe I'll believe you. But until then, no. And none of this Yah, Yash, Shu uh, thing. But if they did believe in Jesus, they would be Christians, wouldn't they? Oh, yeah. So... And if you don't believe they're, that they're Antichrist, well, call your local uh, religious group uh, leader and see what they say. But the Bible says in 1 John 2.23, Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. In 1 Corinthians 16, 22, another reason why they hate Paul, Jesus, uh, Paul says, If any man love not, love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema. What is anathema? It means cursed. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema. Maranatha. Maranatha means, uh, well, according to Webster's 1828, it's a noun. It means the Lord comes or has come, a word used by the Apostle Paul in expressing a curse. This word was used in anathemizing persons for great crimes as much as to say, may the Lord come quickly to take vengeance on thee for thy crimes. Wow. May the Lord come quickly. That's what I understood it to mean. But yeah, uh, Noah Webster was a Christian and a scholar and you don't need modern Bible word dictionaries uh, like Alan nestled which is a which will take you to use the Vatican's and Sinaiticus uh, manuscripts you don't need a Strong's concordance because the new Strong's has changed words um, Webster's is all you need. I mean, the guy could read 20-something different languages. 
read and write and converse in 20 something languages. He could go to Europe, almost anywhere in Europe and speak the language and understand it competently. And that included Greek and Hebrew. Guy was a scholar, man. I just, and a believer. You know, he even quotes, I mean, his word definitions even references where the word appears in the Bible. I mean, come on, people. So, was King James falsely accused? I think so. Yeah. So, being that I live in Florida and this new law, uh, and I'll tell you what's going to happen with this new law. They're going to pack the court with uh, you-know-whos for the jury, and you will not be allowed to introduce evidence. I mean, uh, like a newspaper from an Israeli newspaper that says, that they control certain industries, you won't be allowed to show that to the jury. And even if you did, it won't matter because Mr. Cohen, Mrs. Goldberg, uh, Mr. Silverstein, uh, you know, Rothenberg will be, you know, yeah. So I imagine my days on of teaching the Bible are almost gone. That's why I suggest Get me an SD card, people. You know what? You can go to Amazon and get a 128 gig PNY, PNY, Paul, Nancy, uh, Yahoo, I guess, PNY brand, 128 gig SD card for about $13. And if, you got, if you're a Prime member, delivered. And have it delivered to me. Just make sure when you in the gift click the gift section this is a gift and put your name and address and uh, I'll send it back to you and these these cards are fast I'm sick of people buying the cheapest card and it takes me an hour and a half to download all my stuff these cards I can download everything in about 30 minutes or less sometimes I had to go to sleep and you know start the download go to sleep and then wake up in the morning and you know it's still downloading because it's so slow because i've got so many files and not all of it's my work i mean i've got the new testament on mp3 i've got a bunch of uh, pdf books for various subjects including health um, i've got movies on uh, army and military movies on survival. Um, I've got the comedian Sarah Silver, what was Silverman, where she says, "Oh yeah, I'm glad we did kill Jesus. I'd kill him again." Ha 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 ha. You know. Yeah, some comedian. You're real funny. Um, and all kinds of other stuff. Stuff on uh, nine. 10, 11, yeah, yeah, uh, things on that, um, all kinds of stuff. You know, you can show your friends and family that think you're crazy and you should be wearing a tinfoil hat. Ha, ha, ha. Here, watch this video that's an actual newscast. Hey, wait a minute. Where's that plane that hit the Pentagon? Uh, I don't see any luggage. I don't see any bodies. I don't see any seats. I don't see any wings or tails. Um, I, I, where is it? Um, uh, I know, by the way, that was only shown once that live broadcast. <laughs> so, and somebody was smart enough to copy it or record it probably on VHS. Yeah. You know, yeah. Bob's got that tinfoil hat. Yeah. Big dog. You know it. So, uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, wait for these 15-minute cities. Uh, you won't be able to move. You know, they'll be able to shut your car down. Uh, well, you shouldn't own a car anyways. You should have to be able, you know, you, you got to take the bus or train or whatever. 
um, you know, private ownership of a car? Who do you think you are, special? I mean, only they get to own a uh, private jet, you know, not you, you know. And uh, we didn't like what you said on the Internet, so uh, we're going to cut off your food for a week. And if you say it again, well, we're going to kill you. Yeah. Yeah, people, it's uh, we're almost there. And let me tell you something. God is going to allow it. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he's going to allow it. You know why? Because the church so-called tolerated evil and wickedness and sin and abominations. When the church tolerates abominations instead of solving the problem, God is going to let them no longer tolerate you and get rid of you. Yeah. Yeah, people. He ain't gonna <laughs> he ain't gonna put up with this stuff. He wants a bride without spot and without blemish. He doesn't want a whore that tolerates wickedness and sin. But 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 that's not Jesus. Jesus loves everybody and wants to save them. Yeah, show me that in the Bible. No, he wants evil put away. God does not want evil spreading. Does not want those people teaching our children in elementary school. And once those children grow up, they're going to be against the parents. And that's in Matthew 24. The children against the parents. Absolutely. You know, people just don't get it. They, they think they're going to fly away out of here. Yeah, they're going to fly away out of here. Their soul and spirit's going to fly away out of here when they get their heads chopped off. Or they're going to descend into the flames of hell when they deny Jesus to save their miserable lives to avoid getting their heads cut off under the Noahide laws. N-O-A-H-I-D-E. Look it up. Um, believing Jesus Christ is God in the flesh is blasphemy and is punishable by death, by beheading. Look it up. I'm not making this stuff up. I've been warning about the Noahide laws for between 15 and 20 years. Of course, nobody believed this stuff back then. But uh, it's becoming, you know. Look at the Georgia Guidestones that got blown up. From what I understand, those things weighed, uh, let me see how much they weighed. Oh, the uh, Georgia Guidestones. All right. The first commandment of the Georgia Guidestones was keep the world's population under 500,000. Uh, 500, I'm sorry, 500 million. 500 million. Uh, each granite slab weighed about 42 thousand pounds that's over 20 tons each or um, about 20,000 kilograms give or take a few you know hundred thousand pounds or a hundred or thousand pounds or whatever um, I don't know if you know about granite granite is a one tough rock you know you just, you're not going to take a pound of gunpowder and light a fuse and go boom and all the, the granite slab, you know, be destroyed. No. It, they had to use some military-grade stuff to destroy it. So, and by the way, um, <laughs> uh, they don't want you to know who, who financed putting these things up. I mean, do you know what it would take? Uh, 42,000 pounds, uh, that's about the close to the maximum weight that a semi-tractor trailer truck can haul. That's close. It's very close. And there was more than one. There was four of them. So it was like four trucks. You had to have a crane that could haul, do that. Then you had to pay somebody to install it. And of course, you had to pay somebody to uh, uh, put etch, etch the writing into the thing. 
And granite is not easy to write something in. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're you gotta chisel it in. Uh, you know, so these people, I think what happened was too many people were starting to see uh, what's going on with the uh, Georgia Guidestones. And uh, it started becoming po uh, common knowledge. And they said, well, you know, we got to get rid of these things. So they did. And you watch. A couple of years, they'll say, oh, well, that was fake. That ne Those things never existed. What do they call that? Gaslighting? I, I don't know. But, uh, yeah. So under half a billion people, 500 million. Um, yeah, what does that tell you? You know, the population of Japan, oh, let's look that up. Uh, Japan's population is about 125 million. Do you realize that's one quarter of the number of people the Georgia Guidestones mentions leaving alive. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine that? So basically, whoever put the Georgia Guidestones up believes that we should wipe out about 90-something percent of the world's population. Wow. So, and like I say, get me an SD card. Amazon, P-N-Y. Paul Nancy Yahoo. Um, 128 gig is everything. You know, there's not much of a difference between 64 and 128 gig in price. So, uh, if you want the other people's videos, it's got to be 128. All my stuff barely fits on a 64 uh, gig card. I mean, just my stuff that I did from 2021 back is 43 gig just the stuff I did from 2021 back is 43 gig these are audio files that's a lot of Bible studies people and like I say feel free to upload them to wherever because it's gonna be illegal one day and uh, and I got a lot of written studies too so, I guess you could call it Bible Bob's Bible School or something. I don't know. So, people, I might be, I might have to go offline soon. You never know. I've been saying it for years, and i will be honest with you, Father must be protecting the channel because uh, I'm surprised Tube hasn't deleted me. They've deleted a number of my vids, a number of them, but I never. Uh, they haven't deleted it yet. And oh, by the way, I'm on Rumble. Rumble's, I'm not getting any views on Rumble. Uh, but Odyssey, I am. I'm getting some views on Odyssey. I'm also on BitChute. So, you know, Chaplain Bob Walker. Um, all right, everybody. Like I say, find the oldest version of the King James you can. Um, you could also download it for free. Um print your own and uh, if you send me an SD card I've already done the work for you and I've got uh, the New Testament and Bible audio and the minor prophets uh, also and you could you know put it on a USB drive and listen to it on the way to work every day and coming home because let me tell you something people it's going to be illegal soon I know it is. As soon as the economy crashes, uh, they're going to have their little savior come. And uh, Mark of the Beast, 666. Digital currency. It's coming, people. I'm watching the one world government. It's, it's, it's just about here. I mean, it's amazing. I'm watching Bible prophecy unfold, but, uh, you know, the churches are too busy teaching about tithing and uh, blessing the, uh, the Antichrist to uh, even warn their flock. So, 
you know like I say I'm a volunteer I do this for free you know you get what you pay for volunteers don't get paid right so you're getting what you pay for which is nothing I don't ask for donations I don't beg for tithes no I just do this to warn everybody so all right people take care and uh, all blessings praise glory and honor in Jesus precious name amen